It's the Cool Kids Club. You've been invited to the Cool Kids Club. It's so exciting, yeah. Justin likes monsters, yeah. And Amy likes words in the Cool Kids Club. Cool, cool Kids Club. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Cool Kids Club. This is episode 52, 52? and I am 52, and I am yes. one of your hosts, Amy. Hey, I'm Justin. Hey, Justin, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm pretty good. It's uh, it's WrestleMania weekend as we record this, oh, so I'm kind of in full uh, full wrestling, uh, WrestleMania mark mode. You're halfway through, right? It's it's a two yeah. night event. Two night event. Uh huh. Yeah. Is so, this the uh, first time it's been two nights? No, it's been uh, that way for a couple years. Okay. Okay. They just had too much for uh, one night. Well, actually, it started with COVID, and then they just kept doing oh, it. Oh, interesting. Because they had to like have less people there, I guess. Probably. Well, they had, like, well, in 2020, they couldn't have anyone there. Oh, that's right. That's right. In oh, 2021, remember, that was so weird. Yeah, they had WrestleMania in an empty. In the performance center, in an empty building with no audience. Oh, it's so bizarre. Yeah. Didn't they have like fake like cardboard people in the audience at some stuff, or was that well, other ev- sporting events? Event. Well, yeah, other sporting events. They, they did all kind. Of, uh, all these live events did all kinds of stuff like that. But uh, yeah. Eventually, um, they went to the the Thunderdome, which was like the oh. they set up in uh, Tampa, I think, in the arena down there, and they, yeah. every show was there, and they had the uh-huh. screens where people could like. Oh, okay. Get on, like, you had to, like, get on and enter, like, the room, and you could, like, be on the show. Oh, on the interesting. Yeah. So that was what they did for a while until the crowds could come back. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, sorry. Uh, so it's a two night event. You're halfway through. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh. How I'm, was last night? Fantastic. It was great. Uh, okay. had some people over, had, uh, had yeah. some, had some snacks, had mm-hmm. some drinks, had some wrestling. Drinks. So, uh, mm-hmm. Tonight is not going to be that because it's Sunday and I, I have to work in the morning. So yeah, no no drink no drinks tonight. But uh, yeah, but still wrestling. But still, still wrestling. snacks and wrestling. Yep. So Sounds yeah, doing good. good. I had pizza rolls. Oh, did you take some times before you went to bed? Uh, no, I did not. Really? No, I don't think we have any tums. Oh, you're better than I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> Anyways, today we're not talking about wrestling. We save that for summertime. Yes. Today <laughs> we are talking about uh, a beloved book series. We're back um, on books. We haven't done a ton of book series. We're back on our book shit. Back on our um, book shit. Yeah, we have not done. Uh, we've done what? Babysitters Club and Goosebumps. Uh huh. Have we done any others? Maybe if you count Scholastic Book Fairs. I was going to say we did the Book Fair episode and we talked about a lot of different things then. Um, and I, we talked about this book series, I believe, during that time. And that is Animorphs. Yes, Animorphs. Yes. The, at one, what I was thought at one time was going to be like the successor to Goosebumps for me. Well, and it certainly was as you got older and sort of outgrew the goose <laughs> you, you started getting more into animorphs because I feel like animorphs, but it didn't is... last as long or as leave as leave the kind of impact that Goosebumps did. I would yes. say, you know, yes, and it's definitely sci-fi versus Goosebumps being. Oh, more. it's full on sci-fi. Yeah, it is full. On, and reading through these notes and getting like reacquainted with the plot and the characters, and I'm like, oh, this was like the sci-fi. Oh, um, extremely. and I had forgotten a lot of this. Yeah, honestly, I had too. Uh, I remember, like, I, I read, I don't know, the first two dozen, maybe, I feel like. Yeah, um, yeah. Before I kind of fell off. Maybe that many, maybe, maybe not quite that many. But, uh-huh. um, yeah, I, I, rem- I honestly, it was it's so heavy sci-fi that I didn't remember a lot of the plot. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I remember more of, like, the, <laughs> the covers and... Yes. The yeah, that sort and of thing. And some of like for me the TV show cuz I remember watching some the of the TV, TV show. show as well. But honestly a lot of, as soon as I started looking into like the plot and, and this is like unlike, you know, Goosebumps where every book's its own story. Right. Um this is a one continuing big, mm-hmm. big story. Mhm. Yes. Um and we're not going to go too deep into the actual plot of animorphs but we are going to take a fun little trip though i think we're gonna go we're gonna through some of the somewhere. high points of yeah. of of the animorphs of the actual plot 
um, of the Animorphs. But uh, these started in uh, the first one was published in June 1996, mm-hmm. and the, the original run is 54 books, and then there's 10 companion books. There, so were uh, they like, um, like outside of the main story? So I. Th- I think that they, they were outside of the main story, but they were, I think what I read was uh, eight, two of them, two of the companion books, I think are like video game related. They're kind of considered outside. Oh, okay. But then the other ones, like I remember having a couple of the like special edition ones that are yeah, like. Yeah, I remember. The it Andal- was like its own The story. Andalite Chronicles. It kind of had, yes. it, it was like, so it was in that obviously, like a, almost like a side story. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So the other eight of them were. So you had about 60 books all together. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was adapted like into a TV show, like you said, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about, more about that later. Which uh, I honestly don't think I ever watched the TV show. Really, I don't. I don't remember. I'm. I'm, I'm I know I've seen clips, um, I, and cer- I certainly clips on the internet, but I don't remember. I don't know that I ever watched it. Honestly, I mean, I, it aired ninety eight to ninety nine, and honestly, yeah. I think by that point I wasn't. You were almost in high school by that point. Uh, yeah, I mean that's when I got in. That's when I started high school. So right. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think but I moved I on from Animorphs. Yeah, you were what? Honestly, much I was. More... I was reading Stephen King by this point. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say by this point you really were. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember watching a couple episodes of it. It wasn't anything I kept up with because well, there's not that remember... many. There's like uh, I think twenty twenty something episodes. We'll talk about yeah. a little more about the TV show in a few minutes, yeah. but. I remember, you know, like when you were into Goosebumps, of course, as we've discussed many times on the podcast, I used to be a huge scaredy cat. And so I didn't read the Goosebumps books. Um, However, I did read the first several Animorphs books. So Uh it was like you got into Animorphs and then you. Animorphs was something I was into that was more Mm -hmm. palatable to you. Right. Because it was. Being the huge wuss that you are. Like, yes. I mean, it was like, you know, thrilling sci fi. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. Horror, Horror, you know, wasn't creepy. Um, Not spoopy, not creppy. Yeah, not not spoopy or creppy. So uh, it was definitely something that I uh, was, it was, yeah, it was much more palatable for me. So I do remember going back and like looking at the covers. I'm sure that I read probably the first seven, eight, nine books, something like that. Okay. Uh, And I definitely didn't read all of them. You know, it's interesting though, because kind of by our own admission, and I think I said I said I read two maybe the first two dozen or something. I, I don't know that I read that many. Maybe the first yeah. fifteen or twenty. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah. But uh, we admittedly didn't read these for too long. Like for no, for, for this wasn't a very like big window of my childhood. But they right. have left enough of an impression that we're wanting yeah. to talk about them. You know, because I I didn't, and maybe it's just for maybe like a, people who are a couple years younger than us. Yeah. Maybe who who like kind of stayed through the whole yeah. thing, maybe feel differently yeah. about it. But as sure. we as we were kind of aging out of this, you know, age group this anyway is, by this yeah. point. Yeah. Um but man, it, it did certainly make an impression. You know what I remember? O- other than the covers, the first thing I think about when I think of Animorphs uh-huh. are the uh remember the pictures, the flip book pictures on so on the bottom corner of every page uh-huh. is like a little black picture. And it like starts as the human. It's like the the morph oh, from it's the, like cover, the cover, but thr- but like oh, and you flip yeah. it and it turns like from a human into the animal, whatever the animal is. Oh, I love a flip book. I it's do like too. Magic. And every book had one of them. And every book was a flip book. Yes. Yeah. yeah no, the covers are iconic. They re- they really are. The covers are um, fantastic. Early Photoshop, you know. Yeah. Oh, real, real early. They are wonderful, and I love them. I I always and, loved. I remember like being excited every month or however often mm-hmm. they were coming out there at the yeah. beginning of like how what's the what's the cover gonna look like? What how is mm-hmm. it, how are they gonna make it? it how this girl into a stingray or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, they always found a way. They always, they always found a way. Figured it out. Yes. Um, and I have to. You know, Life they, uh, was, finds a way. Life does find a way. I watched Jurassic Park um, the other night. Oh, so good. So good. Um, does your wife April still say she doesn't like Jurassic Park? Um, well, on I I so the other night we were just kind of browsing movies and I think we were on Peacock or something and it was just Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park's just a comfort movie for me. I've seen it 10 billion times. I yes. I just love that movie and 
And I and I was like, no, seriously, we should just watch Jurassic Park. And she was like, all right, yeah, that sounds good. So I don't know. I don't think I would say she doesn't like it. It might not be a go to for her, but you know, I don't want. I also have, don't want to speak for her. Well, she doesn't we'll, have uh, like the fond memories, maybe with it that we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jurassic Park was big for me. Well, you were a big dinosaur freak. Big, big old dino freak. Big old well, dinosaurs like and a, like, Titanic. Like a lot of boys, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah. You you were definitely... I mean, and you were very into dinosaurs pre-Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jurassic Park was um, just the icing on that dino cake. Did an animorph ever... Well, no, they, I guess they couldn't have turned into a dinosaur because they had to touch the animal, right? Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's time travel involved. This the plot gets wild. I don't. I don't. Does I don't recall crazy. a morph into a dinosaur. But uh, admittedly, I'm pretty mm-hmm. rusty on my animorphs plot. Yeah, that so, is true. Well, uh, speaking, speaking of, of what, plot, speaking of what, <laughs> what the, the hell's the plot of this? About? What Other the fuck than is this amazing about? covers, right? Just, just the once we're past the amazing covers and the flip mm-hmm. and the flip book aspect. What's in the actual text of the book? You know, what's so, this thing about? So, Animorph centers on a group of five humans. Okay, mm-hmm. so you've teenagers. Got, you've got your core five te- yeah, teenagers. Uh-huh. Uh, we've got Jake, Marco, Cassie, Rachel, and Tobias. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're going to talk about each of them individually here in just a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other, the sixth member of the crew, the sixth Beetle. If you will, <laughs> beetle like the animal, not the band. Oh, definitely he. Get I'm it? sure one of them turned into a beetle. Oh, I got it. I, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Now, I would like I would like you to go ahead and pronounce this name for me if you, could, <laughs> if, if you could. Um, let's see. The other Axamil... one, he's a, he's an alien. He's an alien. He's we an should alien. Axamil, oh Axamili, S Garuth is still. That, that was very. That you. was very good. They just call him Ax. Yeah, Axe That's is probably for the best. Yeah, so we've got Axe the alien. Uh, that was very good. So I think that just... was probably about as correct as uh, you're going to get. Well, thank you. Is uh, is is he just? I now I don't recall. So they just like befriend this alien. How does this work? Um. Well, yeah, they kind of get enveloped early on, and I don't recall the specifics to be honest. In this, so the plot is, um, that the. You have the Andalites, who are this race of aliens, of which Axe is yes. an, an Andalite. And he's kind yeah. of a, kind of, it's like four leg, almost like a horse kind of thing. See, you know? I don't remember that at all. Okay, all right. So he is an alien, and they, uh, these kids, the, mm-hmm. a, the aforementioned Animorphs, mm-hmm. uh, they gain the ability to transform into any animal that they touch. And yeah. they use this ability... To fight an alien invasion by uh, an alien race called the Yerks. Sure, why not? Yep, and they are a parasitic race that resemble mm-hmm. slugs, and they kind of like a peacemaker type of type of deal. If you watch the Peacemaker show, mm-hmm. you, they go into your ear and burrow into your brain and like take over, like control of a host, so they can like now that's get, not get a peacemaker into a per- thing. That is the faculty. Well. It, that is the plot of the faculty. It, it is the plot of the faculty, also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's pulling a faculty, uh, or maybe pull- the faculty that's... was was pulling a uh, animorphs because I believe it came out after these books. Started, I was gonna so. say like, uh, well, it's also uh, Night of the Creeps. Okay. Um, so. so just so ear slugs. It, you is know, just it's a big, that old. It's that old. That old that, chestnut. That old chestnut of of ear slug aliens. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, burrowing climb, their way into your burrowing brain. their way into your brain and controlling you like mm-hmm. uh, like a marionette. Yeah, it basically is how I understand. It. That, that is, to, I just imagine they control lots of you strength. like one of the big uh, mech suit things from mm-hmm. Aliens. It's a bit of a ratatouille situation. Oh, it's um, definitely a ratatouille situation, uh-huh. but with slug aliens instead of a rat. slug. Yeah, yeah. Okay. S- slug alien tattooy. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. that sounds right. Mm-hmm. That sounds right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna argue it. So um, the leader of the slug brain uh, aliens, mm-hmm. the Yerks, uh, is Visser Three, and this is kind of names he, familiar. He is the main uh, sort of antagonist of of the series. Okay, he's the leader of the bad guys basically, and I think later mm-hmm. he becomes Visser One. Uh, I was gonna say, well, where are well, one? Get, and two? I mean, gets, I know where one is. He gets I've promoted. He gets promoted. Okay, so it's not so much that that others came before him; it's he's like third ranking. 
that's uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't okay. know. I'm not too familiar on these alien ranking. On okay. The, the, the hierarchy the of alien, alien military forces. So, um, okay. Yeah. Well, you should have really brushed up on that before we started the episode. Well, I was a history major, so I probably you, should know this stuff. You knew I was going to have questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you always do. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> um. So I guess at some point, and uh, you know. So Axe is an Andalite, which is kind of like the good aliens. Like, they're the so ones the, that... the Andalites are the good aliens. The Andalites yeah. are the ones who developed the morphing technology, right? How do they give the kids the morphing technology? What happens? There's something in the beginning. So Axe ends up uh, crash landing on Earth after this, like, space battle, I okay. believe. And ends up encountering these kids. Okay. And he's an Andalite. The Andalites are the species that have... Uh, develop this morphing technology right and then I, I don't recall the specifics of like how they give the morphing powers to them okay. honestly but the, he he ends up befriending this group of kids okay teenager teens youths youths yeah youths and they end up getting sucked into this whole uh alien invasion drama and uh have this ability that they're now going to use to fight off slug brain aliens well that's a bummer because I feel like they probably were like, "This sounds cool. I can just touch whatever animal I want and I'll morph into it." And then they got the ability, and then Axe was like, "Okay, now we actually we have to use that ability to fight an yeah, evil alien here's race." The and they were thing. like, "What? Oh man, that- I can't just use this for fun to be like a house cat all day." Yeah, well, which there, is what I would okay, be doing. So there are, I should say, there are. Uh, some limitations to the morphing ability, okay? Rules and regulations. There's rules and regulations. There's terms okay. of agreements that you have to sign Policies off on. Policies and procedures. Yes. Okay. So there's some limitations. So. Okay, what here, are they? Number one. Uh, they cannot stay in animal form for more than two hours. If oh. they If they do, they will be unable to return to the human form, and they just permanently stay that way. Well... If I'm a house cat, I'm probably not going to mind. I would have just immediately. You'll probably, I would have just morphed fall into a house cat, fall asleep, and then I would have woken up. And by the time you like, wake up, oh, it'll no, be more I than two I'm hours just later. A house cat now. <laughs> God damn what it! What a terrible life. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Okay, so you not have... if I was like a hawk or something that would suck. Well, there's definitely yeah, there is a hawk. There uh, is definitely a hawk. <laughs> okay, number two. Uh, they have to demorph back to human in between morphs, so they cannot morph from one animal to another animal. Okay. All right. Which I imagine is... That seems is, fair. That seems fair because if you're, like, in animal form and then you're, like, fighting another animal and then, like, by touching the other animal you begin to morph into the other... That would be... Like, what if you're flying and then you become, like, an elephant? That would be a problem. <laughs> well, I don't... You know, well, I don't know why you'd be fly, flying in the air with an elephant. But you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't I know. Could, have the first one get up there. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This plot gets weird. You know? As we're about to see. <laughs> Maybe the elephant's on a cargo plane. I'm trying to come up with a plausible... Are you describing the movie Operation Dumbo Drop to me right now? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> you are correct, sir. Uh, number three on the rules and regulations of morphing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, only tight clothing is able to be carried over with a morph. It's light. That's weird. Well... I'm a, I get it, but it's weird that we have to, like... Well, I feel like you have to address... I mean, they're, they're youths. They're teenagers. Yeah. You know, I mean... I guess you could just say their clothes morph, but... Yeah, I guess, yeah, because, you know, you don't want them, like, popping up naked places. Yeah, so. you don't want to have to deal with the naked teenager problem. So, I like, let's just that get it in the rules problem. and get it out of there. Uh, tight clothes, fair enough. We okay. can't can't have them nude because they're teenagers. Yeah, but we can't have them wearing skin-tight clothing. Well, sure. (laughs) Alrighty. (laughs) Moving along. Move past it. Move past it, Amy. Uh, Okay, and number four, and this is a big one. Okay. All right. Uh, While, during a morph, while they are in the form of an animal, they have to consistently maintain concentration uh, to prevent the animal's natural instincts from overwhelming their human intellect. So, like... Let's see, if you're a, um, a, a bat hawk, and you just have a, 
And you have a, a thirst for bats. Like, you're just a bird that wants to eat bats. Okay. And you're in the form of a bat hawk. I've, I've now anamorphed into a bat hawk in this okay. scenario. How's the view up there? It's awesome. Okay. But here's the thing. I'm in a cave. Because it's, it's full of bats and I'm hungry. Uh, that, okay. even though I'm a human in my, in my, in my bird brain, I'm still yeah. going to really crave those, uh, those bats. Those, yeah. The, the, it's my animal instinct. And I really have to okay. focus and concentrate and be like, Justin, you don't want to eat them bats. Justin, don't eat them bats. Don't, don't eat a bat, Justin. Don't, don't do it. You're going to regret it when you morph back. Mm-hmm. You got all that You're bat still going to have to pass that bat. You're still, it's still going to be working its way through your digestive tract. <laughs> so that's back how back. I understand this. <laughs> Justin, you're still gonna have to poop out that bat. <laughs> that's that's don't what do this, it. that's what this means essentially. That's exactly what you're this gonna means. have to poop out that bat. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's the fifth rule. Um, that seems like it would be a pain in the ass. Like, how would you get anything done if you're constantly having to be like, oh my god, don't kill this thing. Oh, oh my god, don't oh god, don't eat this thing. Oh, oh my god. god, don't fuck this thing. <laughs> don't fuck. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I want to fuck it. Oh god, I want to fuck it and I want to eat it and I want to kill it. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> in that order. Not in any other order. I hope. Yeah. Um, oh, so <laughs> I feel like that would be these kids uh, did not know what they were signing up for. Okay. Well, here's a, here's the sweet benefit of morphing. Okay, uh, okay. Any uh, superficial non-genetic injury okay. that you sustain either as a human or in a morph, um, you can heal from. So that's a big one. So, But not like if you got like sickle cell anemia. Like that, <laughs> Correct. That, you'd still have that. You'd still have that. But if you got stabbed in the You'd gut, be a bat hawk like... with sickle cell anemia. <laughs> <laughs> just, just fucking craving bats. Fucking all craving fiery. bats. <laughs> I want to eat some bats. <laughs> oh God, I want to eat some bats. Um, this is a good this podcast. This episode has not been very long, and we are already just taking a turn. This is a good show. I stand by it. Take, this is a good podcast. Um, okay, okay well, that's not bad. So, like, if you got stabbed in the gut, mm-hmm. you could like reach out and find your nearest animal <laughs> and be like. Come here, little squirrel, and then <laughs> and then hold on to the squirrel until you morph into the squirrel, and then you could heal your gut wound. I right? I I don't know if if you have to morph to heal it, or if it's just like a regenerative thing that is like a, a side effect that comes along with having the ability. Oh, okay. So you don't know if they have to go into more like morph into an animal to heal. You just know that because they have this ability, if they're it, it, yeah, and it, it counts for if they're in a morph. Or if okay. they're human. Either one. So if they get, like, HPV, they're just <sighs> fucked. Yeah, I mean, they've got HPV. They've got HPV. Okay. Yeah. So you gotta be okay. careful about eating bats. You gotta... Do also, bats have HPV? <laughs> I don't know, but isn't that how COVID started? You don't want to mess with that. With a bat. Is that how COVID started? With a bat, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant with HPV. I was like, I have oh. never heard that. <laughs> no, it was an anamorph bat situation. Oh. That- <gasps> Oh shit! That, that, you think it was? Well, that's what my conspiracy theory message boards tell me. Mm, okay, okay. You on like four chan or something? Where are you at? It's uh, anamorphs chan. Um, while okay, in perfect. morph, here's another big one. They can shine to each other. Basically, <laughs> here we go with the shining again. Again with the shining. Again with the shining. While in morph, all the anamorphs can communicate telepathically with anyone nearby. Mm, and it's okay. called thought speak, so it's like get out of my head, Charles. <laughs> get out of my head. You know what? Get out of In my, my head, head Stingray. It would, just, it would just be a lot of wanting to eat bats. That's all they'd be hearing. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I'm gonna fuck that bat. No, I'm gonna oh, eat that god, bat. Fuck that bat. No, I'm gonna kill it. No, I'm gonna eat it. Oh god. They would just. They would change the channel real quick. They'd be like, "Let's see what Cassie's doing." Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> well, we haven't talked too much about the the characters, the the, the titular animorphs. The titular animorphs. Why uh, don't you? So we've got five of them, and then six, okay. including uh, well, we've got six, five Ax humans and an axe, axe a millionaire. Uh huh. Um, mm-hmm. Tell us about these characters. 
Well, so Jake is like, which, by the way, I feel like Jake is a perfect 90s white guy name, like white guy protagonist name. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake Berenson. I was like, that's a strong name. Jake good name. Berenson. Jake Berenson. So he is sort of, he's, he doesn't really want to be. He's kind of a reluctant leader oh, of the Animorphs. Yeah. And it's kind of because he is the only one who like has, he's the one who has connections to all these other kids. Like, it's not like, oh, this he's big the, group of he's friends. He's the hub on the wheel. He knows all yeah. of them. Like, you know, when you go to somebody's birthday party and like all their friend, like people from all their friend groups are there and you're like, who are these fucking people? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, like yeah. he's that per, he's the birthday boy. So you it's just like. just glare at each other? Yeah. And you just glare at each other. Yeah. Um, because Rachel is his cousin. Mm-hmm. Cassie is a girl he's like always had a crush on and is also Rachel's best friend. Mm-hmm. Tobias is kind of like, uh, he gets bullied a lot. Tobias is kind of a loner. He's kind of a loner, but Jake is really nice. He's like your all-American boy, and he's really he's really nice to him. So, um, and then you have the alien. So. <laughs> you have the oh, oh, and Marco. Marco I was is say there's a, Marco. Yeah, Marco is Jake's best friend. Yes. So Jake is the, the and Marco and Cassie. Link. So we have some oh, romance yeah. angles going on. We have some will they won't days. Marco. No, it's and... Uh, Marco and Rachel, isn't it? Because Jake and Cassie. Because Jake and. Uh, Rachel are cousins, right? It's Jake and Cassie, I believe, and Rachel and Marco. Yes, that's I what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. And Tobias and Loneliness. And Tobias. And, <laughs> <laughs> and Bats. <laughs> because as we're about to talk about. As we're about to talk about, he is a bird. Tobias is, he's a little different. So mm-hmm. you have the alien, but then you have Tobias, who very early on becomes trapped as we just talked about if you don't morph out after two hours you get trapped Mm -hmm. so he gets trapped as a red-tailed hawk in the Mm -hmm. first book yes he's a cautionary tale (laughs) yeah he is like i wasn't fucking around with that two hour thing i feel Like, like he is also sort of the mascot you know it's like you've got well he has to be he's the only one who's an actual animal right right well so you've got mm-hmm. jake the leader you've got uh axe millionaire the alien who's like uh-huh. you know pulling the strings sure you've got uh rachel who's like your your main your main female your female lead mm-hmm. she's a real like alpha girl you know what i mean very she's real like bloodthirsty mm, she's very bloodthirsty uh even prior to morphing right so she she's just kind of oh, yeah. got like a they give her, they call her like Xena, you know. Right. So they have uh, a, like a little dichotomy, right, with the two female characters. So you've got Rachel, yeah. who's sort of like warrior chick, right? Very aggressive. Aggressive. And then you've got Cassie, and they are best friends, despite right. the fact that they're very different. Cassie's mm-hmm. like kind of a hippie environmentalist. She's the one who's like. She's mo- your Dawn Schaefer from Babysitter's Club. Exactly. She's, mm-hmm. uh, her parents are veterinarians. Uh, she's the one who knows the most about animals and nature. Uh, naturally, yeah. And is very, like, pacifistic. Um, yes. You know? So despite the fact that they're, like, kind of opposites, they're best friends. So yeah. there's that sort of okay. dynamic. Yeah. And again, with Tobias and loneliness. It's Tobias, yeah. Just Tobias. He loses, and... It's just a t- sad story. He loses both his parents. It is Then really he's a sad. hawk. And he yeah. gets bullied. He now gets he's bull- a bird. Oh, it really is sad. You know, um, he does regain at a certain point his ability to morph and he can go back to being a human, but only for two hours. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He kind of has like a reverse. So re- inverted. Basically, if he stays for longer scenario. than two hours, he loses the ability. Yeah, I think that's how he's I'm not able to, to correct. help them anymore. So it's like so. But you do have. Don't you have like a like a bit of a thing? Hang on. No, okay, never mind. I thought Tobias had a love interest, but it's just loneliness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then you have Marco, who he's kind of like the um, the comic relief. He's sort of like the class clown a little bit. Yeah, and like we he's said, the side, he's, he's the sidekick. He's a sidekick. He's Jake's got he's friend. got big Michelangelo energy, mm-hmm. um, and he he actually has an interesting 
um, kind of connection to all of this because, so he lives with his dad um, because his mom recently, you know, a few years ago had uh, died in a boating accident. So his dad's like really having a hard time. Obviously his wife's died. He's like raising this kid on his own. And then they end up finding out that his mom is actually still alive. Twist. Yeah. Twist. Shyamalan. Shyamalan. And not only is she still alive, but she's the host body for Visser 1. Oh, spoilers. What? What? Yeah. And which is, of course, the leader of the Yerks. Yerks. Um, so, yeah. So, good good twist with that. So, he's got, like, a weird <clears throat> connection to this whole thing. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I like thought that. thought his mom died. That's found out X, his mom's still alive. That's like some alive. X-Files shit. That is some X-Files shit. Yeah. 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 That's pretty good. It's a pretty good twist. So, yeah. here's what I want to do now. Uh, okay. Just something a little different than what, than what we normally do. So, we're not going to go uh, too crazy into the very convoluted plot of the Animorphs. Uh, however, yeah. a few months ago, a friend of the show and friend of me and you. A friend to all. A friend to all, Casey. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, didn't we do that last time? A friend Casey to Jones. all. Casey Jones. I think Casey, we did. Casey Jones uh, yeah. sent me a Twitter thread uh, a couple months ago in case we ever did an Animorphs episode. Little did he know that we already had one on the schedule. And I have saved it low these oh, months. Oh, amazing. Now, uh, this is uh, on Twitter, at pop underscore arena okay and uh this is a thread of wild things that happen in the animorphs books um oh, i'm just scrolling through all these covers it, it's, oh shit there's where she turned rachel turns into a bat in that one uh, watch out watch, watch out, for out that <laughs> Watch out for that hungry horny bat hawk oh my god tobias is gonna try to fuck her and kill her and eat her <laughs> Maybe by maybe by number seventeen, he's he's figured out how to how to you know quiet the voices in his head. <laughs> tell him he needs to well, kill and eat bats. Maybe, Let's hope. Maybe. Let's hope. Uh, Tobias does, however, at one point kill Hitler. Now I am not making <laughs> that up, and that is the tweet that sort of started this thread. Um, so uh, this is so uh, there yeah. must be time travel, Justin. Oh, right. we're gonna go into it at uh, at pop underscore arena. Like I said, uh, the first tweet of this is a, a lot of people responding to the Tobias killed Hitler tweet with "That's not real. It's too wild," uh, and then proceeds to uh, list the wildest thing that happens in every Animorphs book. So we don't necessarily go through all of these, but we we start at the beginning. Number one, the invasion. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Uh, Elfangor, a dying Andalite alien who gives our protagonists their superpowers, is killed when Visser 3, an evil alien possessing a body of another Andalite, turns into a giant monster and graphically eats Elfingor. <laughs> Imagine if Darth Vader vored Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> so. <laughs> now this very first cover, he is turning into a, is it a lizard or a snake? Uh, that looks like a lizard. Yeah. And it's wonderful. Yes. Yes. Uh, do you want to read the second one? Sure. In number two, the visitor. Oh, my girl Rachel turned into a cat. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Rachel, a 13-year-old girl, gets chased in an alleyway by an aggressive rapist, where she turns into an elephant, so it can't happen, and scares him off. The rest of the team admonish her for this. Interesting. Hmm. So okay. they're, they're not all winners. They're not all winners. Oh, finally we're getting that hawk. Oh, he's beautiful. Look at Tobias. Look number at him. Th- number three, The Encounter. This is a great cover. A great cover of Tobias turning into the hawk. Yep. Tobias, a boy who gets permanently stuck in the body of a red- red-tailed hawk, finally gives in to his animal instincts and <gasps> kills and eats a rat. A rat. Oh, shit. This sends him spiraling into a crisis yep. of identity, and he attempts suicide in a shopping mall. Well, who hasn't? <laughs> Who hasn't? These eaten are all. A rat these are all one hundred percent real plot points from yes. uh, the Animorphs. Uh, Amy, th- what's number four? Oh, this is the dolphin one. Oh, I used to love this cover because I was a big dolphin. This girl. is Cassie morphing into a dolphin. This is Cassie. She's morphing, morphing into a dolphin, while exploring the ocean. 
for the source of a strange alien signal. The anamorphs, in the form of dolphins, save a humpback whale from a shark attack. Marco gets his tail bitten off and nearly bleeds to death. Yes. These are real plot points. I kind of want to, like, from this point, I want to just scroll down really far and see how crazy, like, number 25 Yeah, so, like, is. the next one we've already talked about, which is the is Marco's mother being alive. Yes, that, right. yeah, so, that, so that's, that you get the one. twist. Let's, like, just scroll down and see, like... Uh, well, here we do... go. Jake gets possessed by a Yerk alien, and the Animorphs are forced to starve oh. it out. With a dying slug in his brain, Jake finds himself in a state between alive and dead, and himself staring face-to-face with Space Satan. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Uh, if you scroll down to, uh, like, number 18, which, by the way, Axe seems to be able to morph as well. Well, yeah. Into, like, he's an alien, but he can also... Well, he's, he a, he's one of the aliens that created the technology, so... But assume. he can also morph into a human if he wants, right? I think so, yeah. I think so. Because what, uh, are, so what are we but animals? This is, this is exactly right. Uh, in this one, the Animorphs are accidentally teleported to an aquatic planet full of psychic frog aliens. Our yes. heroes help the Andalites blow up an entire continent. That's that tracks. Oh, here we go. Time travel. I found <gasps> the time travel. Oh shit! Yep, yep, yep. This is Megamorphs number two. One of the. Uh, oh shit! So I was right. The companion books. The Animorphs are trapped in the late Cretaceous period, where they find yep. Earth occupied by peaceful crab aliens who sure. brought broccoli to the planet. Tobias drops a comet on them, <laughs> killing both the crab aliens and the dinosaurs. So it's Tobias that killed. So it's like, it like was... a, it's like a Tarantino esque revisionist history, but Ooh, instead of okay. like killing Hitler or Charles Manson's cult, uh-huh. uh huh, he wipes out the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! Oops! Oops! Also, they're peaceful crab aliens, and they brought broccoli. So what the fuck was he trying to comment on yeah, for? He just kills him, I guess. He's like, I prefer cauliflower. Like, what was he so mad about? <laughs> Cauliflower. Uh, the Animorphs break into Area 51 to steal a piece of alien technology before the Yerks can get it, only to discover it's just an alien toilet. Wait, wait, wait. Who's David? I don't know. Oh, wait. The Animorphs recruit a boy. Oh, we get a new character in number 20? Recruit a boy named David after he tries to self-discover alien tech on eBay. Yes. David seems a bit eager to kill things to be continued. Justin, look at that cover. And well, look at how, like, halfway through he looks like an otter. All right, so let's go through. <laughs> and, and then he turns into, like, a big snake. Yes. Look at that one. I want to conti- conti- continue this, though. the second one. Because the sequel, David turns into the other Animorphs, killing a red-tailed hawk that he thinks is <gasps> Tobias and cutting Jake's throat as a lion. So David This is getting wild. Alright. The conclusion of the David trilogy. Yeah. David kills Jake and Rachel's cousin and dumps the body in a hospital elevator shaft. This is real life. This the is Animorphs real. trap David in the form of a rat and leave him screaming on a cluster of rocks in the middle of the ocean. That's baller. That's pretty baller, yeah. That is pretty baller. You know they probably flew him out there as hawks. You know. Always dropped hawks. Dropped him down. Always. I would have just turned him into a rat and been like, Tobias, eat him. And then Tobias would have eaten him. Yeah. There you that's go. That's a great, um, that's a great little trilogy there right there in the middle. Also, that um, cover for that last one where Rachel's turning into the little white mouse mm-hmm. or white rat. Is it a rat or a mouse? I can never tell. Uh, that's one I really remember. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, then you start to get, we've got one that's like a prequel book. Yeah. Are they, I guess they have a couple of prequel books. Um, this is the Hork Bajir. Hork Bajir Chronicles. Um, uh, yeah, and this is just more like, I don't even think this has anything to do with the Animorphs. It's just all about the alien race, like the Andalites and the Yerks and stuff. Right? Yeah. Here's another one. The yeah. Animorphs are forced into a war game between Space Jesus and Space Satan. They discover that Satan's warriors, the Howlers, are mentally children who think they're just playing a game as they violently murder everything in their path. Perfect. Yeah. That's great. 
Uh, flea-sized aliens called Helmicrons show up and shrink the Animorphs down, and they fight on top of the Vice Principal's head. <laughs> oh, shit. Is that the... What's <laughs> that like a jellyfish? Which one is that? Numbers 27. What does she turn it into? Uh, what is that? That is... Oh, that's a squid. A squid? Okay. It's great. Remember the pacifist uh, robot dogs? There's pacifist robot dogs. Well, they have a ship at the bottom of the ocean, and it looks Mm -hmm. like Snoopy from Peanuts. Perfect. Yeah, so you you kind of get the idea. Yeah, things are going... Oh, my God. Number 32, where she's turning into the starfish, is hysterical. That's one of my favorite ones. The separation. Rachel gets cut in half while as a starfish. Mm Mm-hmm. And, the t- and then, so when she walks back, she becomes two Rachels. Nice Rachel <gasps> and Mean Rachel. And then Mean Rachel tries to kill Jake and Marco. Obviously. Yeah. And That's it, amazing. her morphing into the starfish is pretty legendary. And she looks like a conehead. She does look like a conehead. It's wonderful. Now, if I'm remembering, the very end of Animorphs is, like, catastrophic, right? Uh, I don't. Isn't honestly... it like the end of the Earth or something? Well, crazy? it is. I mean, this big giant, uh, you know, galactic battle, and then yeah, you've got all this spiritual kind of stuff going on too. And well, this the the penultimate book says all of the enlisted child soldiers burned to death. So uh-huh. we have really leaped uh-huh. quite far. Jake flushes thousands of civilian yurks out into space. Yes. Yes. And then the very last book, if you don't want to be spoiled, on the very end of Animorphs, skip ahead 30 seconds. This is called The Beginning. The final book. Rachel is killed by a polar bear. Yikes. Marco becomes a TV star. Jake has PTSD and is a war criminal. The war is over, but before anyone can catch a breath, a new threat arrives. One war just becomes another. This is hell, and hell never really stops. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. <laughs> That's the end. Is it's just like, oh, That's yeah. That's the this moral of over. the story. This is hell, is and hell never stops. We're always in war. Yes. Yeah. So it really. It's a bit darker than Goosebumps. Turns. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bit darker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And yeah. it, it just batshit crazy. Absolutely nuts, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and now I kind of want to read them because that sounds like a lot of fun. It pr- it probably is a lot of fun to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Should this just turn into an Animorphs podcast, and every episode we talk about a different book from the Animorphs series? Well, I'd be into an Animorphs spinoff, like read read through podcast. Almost uh, okay. 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 So we okay. wouldn't morph okay. into an Animorphs podcast. We would. Spin off into right. it. Is right. that what you're Correct. telling me? Okay. Okay. Um, now, I hope, Justin, that you have figured out um, by this point a way to make pictures of us into Animorphs. Now, you said you were... I'm working on you it. Were, I'm working yeah, on okay. it. I'll have it figured out by the time this episode goes up. I'll work okay, on it. Perfect. Perfect. He's on it. Um, okay. So, that's the books, right? That's the plot. That, that's, that's the Animorphs. That's the Animorphs. That is what happened. Um, and so... While the books are still being made, you do have a television show that starts. This was made by YTV, Global, and Nickelodeon. This started in 98, as we said before, uh, but it only had two seasons, a total of 21, or I'm sorry, 28 episodes. So they definitely did not get through all of the books in the show. And I did not watch the show long enough to know if each episode was just 
um, an adaptation of that book. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I honestly don't recall ever. So maybe it. if someone else uh, has watched it, um, they could they could let us know. Now this this is not um, a series that spawned a lot of merchandise. No, like not much. Goosebumps, as no, we discussed, no, had God, no. so much merchandise. And even Baby Sears Club had a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, this had actually a couple of video games, which I was surprised about. Yeah, um, I never played any of the games either. I don't, yeah. remember, I don't recall any of those. Yeah. The first one, um, or at least one of the ones, was uh, Animorphs Know the Secret, and that was for Windows. Yes. Which is amazing. No, oh, secret. do you remember those computer games? And you would like... I feel like walking around Walmart and you're bored and you'd like go back to like, do you remember at the Elizabeth and Walmart and how it was kind of like you'd go back to that last aisle and it kind of stopped like behind the, there was like a counter up front. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of like, there's only one way to get out of the aisle. Right. And like, that's where all of the computer games and like software and stuff was. Do you uh, remember that? Kind of. Yeah. Now that you said Yeah. That. I have a very, I can like visualize it in my head right now. I can remember going over there and like looking at all the computer games. Yeah, uh, I well, remember. I remember sure. Command and Conquer. I used to play some Command and Conquer. Mm, yeah. Is that like Dungeons and Dragons, but not or Wow? No, not Dungeons and Dragons. Wow. No. No. What's it like? It's like a like a like war game sort of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you did not play Animorphs. Know the secret. I did not play Animorphs. Know the secret for Windows. Uh, I did not play Shattered Reality for PlayStation. Mm. For the OG PlayStation. Oh my God. And then there was a Game Boy Color game just that was just called Animorphs. That's baller. It's, it's pretty baller. There it's weren't pretty baller. even there there wasn't that many toys either. No, there really wasn't. So they introduce they do a toy line when the TV show is on in 1999, mm-hmm. uh, and they are marketed as part of Transformers, even though there's no connection between Animorphs and Transformers. <laughs> Well, I guess they just thought, well, they're both transforming into other things, so... Yeah, but I mean, one's... <laughs> no, I know, but that's, I feel like, as far as their thought process went. Yeah, so yeah. for some reason, they're marketed as part of the Transformers. It didn't take off. They canceled it soon after that. Uh, several of the... They had some designs already for planned Animorphs uh-huh. toys, and uh-huh. a lot of those were reworked into uh, Beast Wars Mutants line. So they still, still got used... Now, I wonder how that would have worked with an Animorphs toy. Did it transform into the animal? I would think so, because it was a Transformers, if they're more marketing it as a Transformers toy, and if it w- if the ones were reworked into the Beast Wars mutants, then yeah, I would think so. Interesting. Okay, I'm looking one up right now. Live, so live I guess eBay. they had, li- yeah, as always, we're live Googling over here. Yeah, so I guess they had, like, um, detachable pieces. So you could, like, create it. It would be a human or... Like, this one is Rachel as a lion with combat claws. Combat claws! Combat claws! They were, yeah, Transformers Deluxe is what they were called for some reason. That's very weird. Very weird. Yeah. So, even though Animorphs, I feel like, is um, something that... Everyone from our generation and probably a little bit younger is really, um, like, really, really remembers. I think a lot of us read these books. When you look back on it, like, the TV show didn't run for very long. There wasn't a successful toy line. Like, There's only, like, 60 books total. Like, it didn't have yeah. all the spinoff series right. like Goosebumps did and Babysitter's right. Club did. And it ran for five years. Basically. Yeah. But we all remember it. And you know what I think the biggest part of that is? Those covers. The covers. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Yes. Those covers were amazing. And I think that's what we remember the most and probably what we were drawn into the most. Oh, for sure. Um, And, you know, most things that we talk about um, on here, almost all the things we talk about, there's always some kind of, uh, and it's back in some capacity, um, but with Animorphs, you had some rumors of a movie that started about 2015, but weren't really even confirmed until 2020. Uh, the original authors uh, not involved, and there's really no up-to-date info on that. So, no, not that I could find. Uh, yeah. uh, I could. I, I found where uh, the, the authors um, 
who, by the way, I don't even think we mentioned the authors, did we? <laughs> no, we forgot. It's a uh, it's a husband Catherine and wife Applegate. team. Catherine it is a husband Applegate and, wife team. and Michael mm-hmm. Grant, who write under the name K. A. Applegate. Uh, so and it's Catherine a- Applegate is still a very popular author. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it? Uh, oh gosh. She's written several children's books that have been very popular, and I can't think of one off the top of my head now. But Animorphs. Um, well, other than Animorphs. And it was recently, it was like in the last couple of years that I realized that was the same K.A. Applegate. Well, good for K.A. Applegate. Yeah. Yeah, so still very, very yeah, they, uh, successful. Yeah, they, they uh, they're not involved in it, though they you know don't oppose it or anything, apparently. Mm-hmm. They're, you know, they're just, I guess they don't have anything to do with it. But honestly, like the most up-to-date info I could find on it was three years ago. Yeah. There's no, yeah. there hasn't been any, there's no up, really updated info on a plot, on a cast, mm-hmm. on a story. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, so yeah. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe it's just one of those things that'll disappear into the ether and will never happen again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's going to take um, the the good people on the internet to, maybe we should start a campaign. Maybe it'll give this, we'll give it that cool kids club bump. That's right. Bring back Animorphs, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, before we uh, wrap it up, uh, mm-hmm. anything else you want to add about uh, Animorphs? Your memories of Animorphs? I don't think so. Um, I-, I remember them fondly. Uh, I kind of want to read more of them now. A, a staple um, of Scholastic Book Fairs. And it was a staple of Scholastic Book Fairs, yes. For sure. Um, do, you, do you own any of these? Yes, I do. Um, I need to. Are get... they your original ones from they... when you were a kid? Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, I need to get them out of storage. They're in, the, but I probably have the first twenty, maybe. Yeah. I know I have a couple of the special editions too. I'll have to get them out of out of storage. Oh yeah, you got to get those out. You got to put those on display with your goosebumps and your shivers. That's true. That's true. I know. I'll get on I know. it. Yeah, get on that. Um. So we should uh, before we uh, get into plugs and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, March Radness is over. It uh, is. At, look, as we record this, it's actually the today is the two year anniversary of our first episode going two up. Two years. Two years. Two years. Who it thunk? is April second. Who to thunk? Not me. Not me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, today is two years uh, since we posted our very first episode, which was the Burger King Kids Club. Um, so yeah, if you have never gone back and listened to our first episode. Uh, definitely do that, and please ignore our sound issues on our second episode, which is Snick. Because mm-hmm. there's a which learning curve, of, guys. Still one of our most downloaded episodes, one of those early ones. Oh, that makes me upset, because the <laughs> audio is so bad. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's we were okay. getting our footing. We were. We were. Amy didn't know how to use her computer. Uh, but March Radness is over, and March yes. Radness, if, uh, if uh, you're unaware, is a little tournament we did on our social media uh, to pick the topic for our two-year anniversary episode. Which, uh, two years, <laughs> uh, which is going to be this episode, uh, but we kind of shuffled some stuff around because we have some mm-hmm. guests that we mm-hmm. wanted to incorporate into uh, the mm-hmm. episode. So our next episode is going to be the March Radness winner, which was Nintendo. Nintendo. So we're going to have an episode on Nintendo memories. We have uh, at least one, probably more than one guest lined uh-huh. up. Uh, this might so be our biggest gonna, episode yet. Maybe. So, yep. uh, yeah, that'll be coming up in two weeks. And then mm-hmm. yeah, we've got a bunch of fun stuff planned. Uh, we really do. We've got more wrestling stuff coming this summer. We've mm-hmm. got uh, School Days is coming back. Yep. More Movie Club, of course. Yeah. If yeah. you uh, if you like the show, go on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, write us a review. Give us uh, yeah. five stars. Write it, Say a little something nice or whatever. Uh, it helps yeah. the show out, and it's totally free. Uh, and it's the best way you can really support us. Yes. And if you want to follow us on social media, of course, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Cool Kids Club Pod. You can also find us over on Facebook if you search for Cool Kids Club Podcast. Uh, if you want to follow Justin or I personally on Instagram, um, my handle is Amy Reads TN. Uh, and Justin, you are over there at Lousy with Ghosts. Indeed I am. Indeed. Indeed It's a brand. It's a whole brand. Oh, and what a brand it is. It is. (laughs) Um, Also want to say thank you, as always, to Brian Wakefield um, for our banger of a theme song, all of our theme songs, 
um, head over to brianwakefieldmusic.com um, to check out all of the many things that Brian is always up to. Very talented guy. Very sweet guy. Another friend to all. Was at my house watching WrestleMania last night. Is going with me this next weekend mm-hmm. to meet Bruce Campbell. Oh shit! That's we're right. gonna we're gonna be meeting Bruce Campbell at an event he's doing. We're gonna be watching Evil Dead Two with Bruce Campbell. It's gonna be no amazing. Yeah. It's gonna be amazing. You better be uh, posting some stuff on Cool Kids about that. I'm 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 like meeting all of your crushes. I met Bret Hart yeah. uh, last year, and now uh-huh. I'm meeting Bruce Campbell. Just yeah, I'm trying not to actually get really angry about it, but that's fine. Oh well, that's fine. You know, uh, next weekend I'm flying to Philadelphia for like a day to go see the Disney 100 exhibit. Before nice. it goes away. Very so, cool. yeah. There so, you, you know, go. I, I got, I, I got, I got stuff. You got fun stuff on the horizon too. I got too. stuff going on. Yeah. So, um, thank you guys as always for listening. We hope that you enjoyed this little uh, episode uh, chronicling the uh, war between the Yerks and the Andalites. Um, and if you have anything uh, you want to add to our conversation about the Animorphs, please talk to us on social media as always. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening. Did I say watching earlier? Did I say anything at all? Thank you for listening. I don't know. You're, you're not watching us. That's for sure. Cause I'm in my pajamas. They wouldn't stop you if they were watching. No, it really wouldn't. No, 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 probably not. And, uh, until next time, stay cool. Yeah. I'd say stay cool. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Probably stay cool guys. Stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. San Diego? Change it. Change it.